You hear the music, you know what it means. It's time for Friday Night Sports Extra. I'm Julia Minnison alongside my trusty co-host Alex Crescenti. Another Friday and you know we're getting further and further along into the season here and we're starting to separate the pretenders from contenders when it comes to making a run potentially at a state championship. Yeah, you're yeah. starting to see like who can really make some noise come late November here and maybe that's you've got the, just the team. Yeah, that might be Gonzaga prep. That's where we're going to start. The Bullpups had a big game tonight hosting the Mead Panthers. Gonzaga prep with the ball to start here and ring ring Bodie Stafford on the phone dialing Jonah Keller. Now that ball was coming straight from my head. So thank you Jonah for saving my life. Touchdown Bullpups. They take the early lead. Now Mead looking to respond going the other way. But Aretta Nehemiah says not today. The sack gives Gonzaga Prep great field position, and that allows Nate Moynette to eat all day long. Gonzaga Prep with a touchdown, and they ultimately run away with this game. 31 to 7 is the final score here, Alex. Now let's go to two teams in opposite directions of Ferris and Mount Spokane out at Union Stadium. Uh, we pick things up at the end of the first half. Ferris with the ball and trailing 27 to nothing. John Olson connects to Fareed Lawal to get the Saxons on the board just before halftime. It was all Mount Spokane from there. As TJ Haberman's going to heave this one to uh, Talon Maine, who makes the great grab in the end zone for the touchdown. Maine holds the poise and gives each of his teammates a nice little, yep, thank you very much. Yep, business, it's just business out there for them. On the other end, Ferris looking for an answer. Ryan Bochers picks it off, though. And yeah, the Wildcats are all over this one. They cruise 51 to 14, a victory over Ferris. Over to Shadle Park High School, where they're hosting North Central. The Shadle Park cheer squad brought the energy, but so did the team. Nicholas Tilton rumbles ahead for the touchdown as Shadle Park goes up 21 to 7. Here's more from the Highlanders. Quarterback Caden Hooper, he wants to get in on the action too. Rolls out and just rolls into the end zone for the score. It was all Shadle in the first half. North Central looking to answer on the other end. This time it'll be Travell Jones dropping back, rolling out. Jones throws it up and check out the hand-eye coordination from Vance Taylor. See, mom video games are good for something. Shadle Park, though, they would block the extra point attempt, and the Highlanders would drop a 62-piece chicken nugget on North Central. 62-27 is the final score there. Good jersey matchup, though. Big time showdown out in the Valley tonight as Central Valley welcomed in the undefeated Moses Lake Mavericks. Opening drive for the Mavericks. Quarterback Brady Jay is going to air it out, and it's picked off by who else? Kamoni Davis. The guy continues to do it all for the Bears this season on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Ensuing CB drive, check out this run by Danner Smith. He's met by half the Moses Lake defense, but refuses to go down and eventually earns that tough first down. Someone call Kyle Brandt. That is an angry run. However, they have to punt it away. From there, Jay was a bit of redemption. Hits Kyson Thomas in the end zone for the game's first score, and Moses Lake strikes first. Early in the second, Mavericks can be threatening again, and Jay's going to find Thomas again over the middle. He scores for the second time in the half, and this one would get a bit interesting. The Bears would fight back, but they eventually they fall in a shootout as Moses Lake takes this one 44-28. And that's a tough win for Moses Lake because Central, it's like a Broadway play over there where it's all right. dark and then the, oh, it's just I don't know the how field. the players even see what's going on in the field. I can barely see the action. So we're going to have some more games on the other side of the break from the Valley. We also have some games out of Idaho that you're not going to want to miss when Friday Night Sports Extra returns. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Friday Night Sports Extra. Julian Minnison, Alex Crescenti here with you. We saw some great games here in our area, directly Spokane, the Valley, but Idaho had some pretty good ones as well. Yeah, they got some players on that side of the border as well. Now, Moscow and Lake City, Moscow's going to uh, start out throwing. Noah Velasco airing it out to Caden Teagan for a big gain here. Eventually, yeah, he just heaves that one downfield and gets this one. Uh, into the opposing territory. Uh, later in the drive, Noah Velasco uh, is going to uh, sneak it in for the score. Now Lake City takes over. Avery Cherry is going to roll out oh, eventually here uh, and throws the ball to a uh, receiver. Uh, hands it to Jacob Hill. Oh, little, oh look at, a little trickery there uh, as uh, Lake City goes on to win this one 34 to 2nd. 
Big win for them. Now the Clarkston Bantams traveled up north to pay a visit to the West Valley Eagles tonight in a two-way showdown. Alex, you want to take this one here? Yeah, that's right. In the third quarter, Clarkston trying to rally from a big deficit, but on fourth down, the quarterback is met by Keenan Dunfield for the sack, and that's going to stop the drive dead in its tracks. Eagles would have to punch away on their possession, but they pin Clarkston back, and on third down, it'll be Austin Griffith who comes in for the sack, and once again, the defense holds, and Austin is pumped for that one. Look at him. West Valley gets the ball back and makes the most of it on this drive. Quarterback Ethan Turley takes the designed run to his left and will follow his blockers all the way into the end zone as the Eagles extend their lead and cruise to a victory. West Valley wins this one 42-13. Eagles 3-1 on the season. All right, the Post Falls Trojans going head-to-head -head against the Lakeland Hawks. Post Falls will start off with the ball uh, right here on this possession, trying to score, get something going on offense. But Rowan Riley reads this pass like a book. The interception by Riley. He is hyped after getting taken down on the sideline, but unfortunately that's where the highlights would stop for this Lakeland team because it was all post falls after that. Check this out. One long touchdown run by Caden Smith. A little wildcat formation. He is gone. No one is catching him. I mean, who needs to even pass when you got to run like that? Post Falls runs away with this game, literally. 55 to nothing is the final score over Lakeland. Big win for the Trojans there as they blank the Hawks. Now going back to the Valley, Cheney was visiting University this afternoon. A little day game action. In the third quarter, Titans with a two touchdown leads at the Blackhawks quarterback Samuel Coffin under heavy pressure. Oh no. And it's picked off by Isaiah Ramirez. He's there for the touchdown. Easy pick six. And he's there to celebrate. Look at his teammates. Oh, yeah. Give him a little grief. Still in the third, U High on the offensive uh, side. QB Caleb Walcott rolls to his left. Can't find anything. Goes to his right. And then he, look at this throw. Finds Antonio Allen. Makes the great grab. That would have been a grab in the NFL. Both feet in bounds. Couple plays later, Logan Trantrum. It's going to cough it up, ends up giving it back to Cheney, so the Blackhawks have a little bit of life in them. But on the ensuing drive, Coffin going over the middle and doesn't see Paxson coming in, who jumps in front of this pass, takes it deep into Cheney territory, and U High gets a big win there, their first win of the season. Cheney still looking for their first this season. You know, Caleb Walcott, he's actually related to one Jarek. Walcott Ooh. from the University of Idaho, the uh, sports information right. director over there. He told me so. Maybe we'll see Caleb in our top plays. Who knows? Might be a little bit of a teaser there. On the other side of the break, we'll have those top plays for you. Count them down from three, two, and one. We have it all on the other side of the break when Friday Night Sports Extra returns. Stay with us. You see the graphic means plays of the week time. Julian Minnesota alongside Alex Presenti here with you on Friday Night Sports Extra. Last week was going to be hard to top because right. there were some big time plays, especially from the Rogers Pirates, if you remember that game from last week. I do. Um, yeah. A lot of top plays that we had to narrow down to just three, like we do every Friday night here on the show. We're going to start with play number three, though, and that's going to go to Taylor Maine of Mount Spokane. Maine is going to come back for the ball right mm -hmm. here, makes the grab in the end zone, and then strikes a pose as the Ferris Saxons walk by him for the touchdown. Mount Spokane ends up taking down Ferris in this one as we take another look at it. Final score here, 51-14. Uh, to 14. Play number two goes to North Central's Vance Taylor. Check out the hand-eye coordination on this touchdown catch. A little tip drill to himself for the score. North Central lost to Shadle, but Taylor gets our number two in our play. Now, I, I don't, I mean, he did that without gloves, right? Let's, let's look at this again. Oh, I actually didn't did. even notice that. Did he do it without gloves? Because that makes it even more impressive. Yes, without gloves. Yes, that's what we like to see. I didn't. Kids these days in their gloves. <laughs> I didn't give him enough credit. Good job, Mr. Taylor. Now, our top play of the night goes to Gonzaga Preps, Jonah Keller, who makes this catch and uh, saves me from embarrassment by getting hit with the ball because that ball from Bodie Stafford was coming straight for me. So thank you, Jonah, for that. Also, in return, giving you the top play of the night and to add insult to injury to uh, the other guys in Meade, Gonzaga Prep, they take down the Panthers 31 to 7. Yeah, and also thank you to Jonah. We need that camera tomorrow because we're going to be using it in a couple places. Yeah, I like how the little segue yeah. you got right there. So yeah, we're going to be in a couple places when it comes to the world of college football tomorrow. We're going to talk about it on the other side of the break when Friday Night Sports Extra return. Everything you need to know about your college football Saturday here in the Inland Northwest when we return. 
So a huge night for high school football, as it is every Friday night yep. throughout the fall. But a bigger night tomorrow on the Palouse when it comes with Washington State taking on number 14, Oregon State. First time these two teams have been ranked when they've gone head to head. A little unbelievable. We've been playing this rivalry for almost 100 years, and this is the first time they're both in the top 25. The stakes really couldn't be any bigger. For the winner, it's going to be in the driver's seat, and you could be sitting in late November potentially with a trip to Vegas on the line. Loser, a lot more work to do. For Washington State here, I mean, they, uh, they've they been proving everyone wrong at every <laughs> turn here. People thought they were going to lose to Colorado State. People thought they were going to lose to Wisconsin. Here where they are, number 21 in the nation. Right, and of course the big storyline heading into that game is both WSU and OSU have been in the same boat when it comes to on the outside looking in at conference realignment. They've kind of held hands and sang kubai up until this point, but yeah. tomorrow it's going to be anything but friendly on the field. Uh, that's what Jake Dicker promised, and I believe that guy. Yeah. So. No, yeah, no, none, all that, uh, they're going to do the fight song of Oregon State, the band of Washington State is going to before the game, but hopefully these players take it a little more seriously than that. You know? Prior to that game, we're going to head over to Idaho and yes. Vandals, they have their home opener against Sacramento State. Very tough matchup to start off the Big Sky Slate. Now, that's another top 20 matchup as well. Sacramento State coming into town. If you remember, the Vandals almost knocked them off in the regular season last year. Now, a bit of redemption there. Can they, and they're also, this is the first time they're in the Kimmy Dome this season. We've been playing for a month. Yeah, they beat Nevada, almost beat Cal, gave them a run for their money, and now they're looking to uh, hang a banner up there in the Kibbe Dome when it comes to a Big Sky Championship. Another Big Sky team, uh, Eastern Washington, coming off their first win of the season, taking on UC Davis tomorrow night, 7 o'clock kickoff for that one. Yeah, for Eastern, this is basically do or die for them. A loss, and the season all of a sudden is, you know, I don't want to say it's virtually over, but any chance of the postseason is gone. And they showed some promise last week against Southeastern Louisiana. They're going to need a get-me game before they welcome in Idaho and that rivalry, the Inland Northwest rivalry there um, at the Red of Roos Field and Cheney. So we're going to have all coverage of those three games tomorrow. Um, as for now, another Friday in the books. A lot Did of it. fun. Yeah, we'll be here same time next week, so don't go anywhere on that. And look for coverage, your live report from Pullman after the game tomorrow. See you guys next week.